Europa is one of the most promising places to look for life beyond Earth. But Europa Clipper is not going to search for life or the alien components of life on the Europa, the moon of Jupiter. Rather, we are going to explore the habitability of Europa, the Galilean moon of Jupiter. Europa Clipper will assess the habitability of Europa's subsurface ocean determine the salinity of this ocean and how deep it actually is. Investigate the structure of the ice crust that's overlying this ocean. Search for the existence of subsurface lakes as well and understand the composition of the strange reddish brown material that we all see on the surface. The one big challenge for the Europa Clipper is to reach Jupiter. During the course of five and a half years, while traveling 1.8 billion miles of distance, Europa Clipper will be taking assistance. So the gravity assist maneuvers that are going to steal some amount of angular momentum and take the assistance of the gravity of Earth and Mars will push Europa Clipper towards the Jupiter. And once it will reach into the Jupiter's orbit, it will start orbiting Jupiter. Europa Clipper is not going to orbit Europa, the moon of Jupiter. Rather, it will be orbiting Jupiter and will be doing flybys of Europa. But once we go that far away, there is a very crucial requirement of power generation. And for the power generation, initially it was planned that Europa will be powered with the help of multi-mission RTGs, radioisotope thermoelectric generators. But finally, the mission team decided that we are going to go with solar panels. But when you are such far away, at such large distances from the sun, the solar insulation falls drastically. Just 4% of what we get in Earth's orbit will be available for Europa Clipper around the Jupiter that converts into huge size of solar panels for generating the required power. So, the solar panels are huge, they are humongous, they are 45 feet on each side. With the solar panels, the whole length of Europa Clipper will be somewhere close to 100 feet. So, such a big spacecraft has been launched with the help of Falcon Heavy. Now, when we will be orbiting Jupiter, once we reach Jupiter in the year 2030 and we start orbiting Jupiter and we are doing the flybys of Europa, we are going to get as much close to the surface as we can and that will be around 25 kilometers above the icy crust of Europa. When we talk about going close to the moon, there is one big issue. We all are aware about the three body problem. For the Europa Clipper, it is not a three-body problem. It is much more complicated. It's a seven-body problem with Sun, Jupiter, Europa Clipper, and the four Galilean moons of Jupiter. There is one more significant challenge, and that is to deal with the radiation that is trapped within the magnetic field of Jupiter. Jupiter is having a huge magnetic field that is around 20,000 times more powerful than the Earth's magnetic field. And effectively, that magnetic field acts like a particle accelerator and Europa Clipper will be taking plunge into that radiation belt every time it is doing the flyby, taking the scientific measurements and it will come out of that field, turn around towards the earth and transmit all the data using the high gain antennas to the ground stations. But while doing all that, the amount of radiation that will be felt by Europa will be almost equivalent to a million chest X-rays being done at once. And in that particular challenging and demanding environment, Europa has to carry out all its scientific and diverse scientific activities. That's why a specific vault has been developed that will take care of that radiation and keep all the required electronics safe during the plunge into that radiation belt. The other interesting aspect of these flybys and the orbit around Jupiter is Europa will end up doing 80 orbits around Jupiter and 49 flybys of Europa. 
So this particular spacecraft will be taking a lot many plunges into the high radiation belt around the Jupiter because of the huge magnetic field and still it has to work just perfectly fine. Now the most important question. We are going to Europa to search for the habitability. But the conditions that are required to support life on any planet or maybe moon of any planet is there should be some water, there should be the basic building blocks for the life, carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen and there should be energy. So right now as far as we know Europa is expected to have underneath the thick layer of ice huge ocean, salt ocean. That salt ocean contains just double the amount of water that we have on earth. So we have water that too salty on Europa and it is expected that it might be having the basic building blocks, it might contain the basic building blocks. But what about the energy? Europa doesn't have any energy of its own and we are too far away from the, from the sun to get the amount of energy required for creating the basic life forms. Now here comes the catch. The energy that Europa gets is because of the tidal pull of the Jupiter. Jupiter is huge. Jupiter can have thousands of Earths within it and the gravity of Jupiter is every time pulling and squishing the Europa like a ball. So when that deformation happens because of the pull of gravity, that deformation creates, generates energy. That it might be coming out as geothermal vents. And geothermal vents on Earth are the places where the life actually form and originated. So if that is the case with Europa, that means the life might be taking some shape in those oceans of Europa. But the question is, how do we know that how deep the oceans are and how we are so sure that there is some ocean underneath that thick layer of ice? So in the previous missions, when we were scrutinizing and analyzing the magnetic field that is being generated by Europa, we found out that the first possibility is Europa can't have the magnetic field of its own. It is the induced magnetic field. We know the magnetic field of Jupiter is 20,000 times stronger than the magnetic field of Earth and that magnetic field might be inducing magnetic field in Europa. But then for that you need some material, some magnetic material to catch that magnetic field and push it back. And Europa can't have that kind of a core that a planet has, a terrestrial planet has. So it was speculated that the oceans underneath the thick ice crust might be having all those basic requirements of the elements that can get magnetized and start generating their own induced magnetic field. And that gave the idea about the possibility of salty oceans underneath the thick layer of ice. So the mission was launched on Falcon Heavy. Right now it's moving towards the Jupiter. But before doing that, it is going to get two slight pushes, one from Earth, one from Mars, and then it will get back on its trajectory towards the Jupiter. Once it will be close to Jupiter, it will be spending, or rather we'll say it will be burning 50% of the propellant that it is carrying, around 6,000 pounds of propellant is being stored in Europa. That 6,000 pounds will be carried for all five and a half years. The 24 engines, the thrusters that are there on Europa, they will be used for maneuvering the spacecraft, for changing the orientation, for correcting the attitude, for keeping it on track towards the Jupiter. But as soon as we come close to the point when we will have JOI, J -O -I, Jupiter Orbital Insertion, 50% of that propellant will be used in a maneuver that will last for around 6 to 8 hours to make Europa Clipper get caught in the gravity of Jupiter. And once that's done, it will start going around Jupiter, adjusting the trajectories for the flybys of Europa. And 
That's how we are going to reveal the mysteries of that icy moon of Jupiter.